everybody, welcome back to Northwoods Engineer. Today I'm going to be showing you the electrical system in my camper conversion trailer. It's uh, about as basic as you can get right now. I don't have any solar or uh, inverters for 120 volts AC. It's just a 12 volt system, runs a few components, but it's a good place to start if you're looking to just get a few electrical components inside of your trailer. So I'm going to show you everything from the battery to the way I wired it fuse block, and then also the components that I have on the inside. So thanks for watching and hopefully this helps you if you're looking to do something similar. So one of the big things you're going to have to figure out is what type of battery you want to add. Uh, it's fairly common to add a deep cycle marine RV battery. Uh, people are starting to go to lithium. They're lighter. They, you can get higher amp hour batteries, but they are way more expensive. So I just went with uh, somewhat inexpensive deep cycle RV battery. And I'll show you the specs on that later in the video, but figuring out where to mount it is the next thing. I chose to mount it on the outside. As you can see here, it's mounted at a, I have a V nose, but I've got a little bit of room, just enough room to mount the video or mount the battery right on the front. So I bolted down a piece of angle aluminum and then also a couple self-tapping screws into the tongue with large area washers to hold this case down and then there's also a strap that came with the battery box that goes around the whole battery and the cover so the connections for the battery are uh, four gauge wire uh, i bought it at home depot uh, if you're looking for some battery wire or wire in general they sell it by the foot so it's a little easier to get the lengths that you need without having to buy an entire roll but either way i got red and black four gauge wire so on the positive side, I've got a um, ring terminal, and then from there I have a 60 amp inline fuse, and then that wire goes out the bottom of the case, down along the tongue, and then up into the trailer. The black wire comes off the negative stud, goes to this switch, which is a master power switch that I can use to shut off the entire uh, circuit. So it's off right now, and then this is on, so just a two position switch. And then the other side of that black wire exits out the battery box and then mounts to the frame to create the frame as the ground. Underneath the trailer, you can see where the wires exit out the bottom of that battery box. Black one just gets screwed directly to the frame to create the ground. Red one goes through a P-clip for some strain relief and then goes up into the trailer, the same spot that the stock harness goes up. At this time, I don't have any way to have this battery get charged off my pickup truck. I plan to do it in the future, hopefully sometime this year, this summer. Uh, it's February right now, so I'll be getting ready for the, the summer camping season. But hopefully I'll be able to get that added to my truck and uh, make a video on that too. So look out for that. So from underneath the trailer, that red wire comes up right in the front here. And it routes up and it's behind this piece of aluminum cover here going the same route as the stock harness, like I mentioned. It goes up here, and then the nice thing about these Tritons is that they have this uh, cove, they call it, all along the upper edge, which is up where all the wires are routed. So you can see the wiring harness up here. So this is the red wire I added. It goes up into this cove, comes down the right-hand side, and then goes into the wall here. So I had to drill a couple holes through the frame members in there, and then I route it through, and then I also add a little dab of some sort of adhesive sealant just to keep that protected from chafing on the metal. And then it comes out the wall and comes into this box. This box is what houses my fuse block, and it's just a, a waterproof plastic box that I bought off Amazon. And then I bought this little panel here too that has a voltage meter, has uh, just a 12 volt socket, and then a USB connector as well. And I cut a hole just with a jigsaw in the surface of, or in the cover of the box, and then uh, glued that panel in there. I would have liked to have gotten a box that has like a quick open and hinges open, but I couldn't really find anything that was the proper size. So that's why I got this. But either way, it has four screws at the corners. Take those out, and it opens up. Uh, the panel here is all wired. It's just all the positives of each component are hooked together and same with all the negatives. And then the 
positive for that panel comes off the fuse block and then there's a negative wire going in to ground it on the inside of the wall. Here is the uh, fuse block. It's from Blue Sea Systems. It's pretty high quality. I definitely recommend it. So the fuse block has the main power stud. So there's that heavy four gauge main power wire that came from the battery, comes out the wall and hooks to the fuse block. And then each of these smaller 16 gauge wires is a circuit in the trailer so those come off the block they go back into the wall in that hole right there and then they go up the wall and up into the cove all the wires that i used for the components that i have in here is 16 gauge stranded wire that runs down the coves and then the first circuit runs to this overhead light which came with the trailer it's uh, grounded straight to the frame just by being attached to it it used to run off the trailer, but I want the off the truck power, but I wanted to be able to turn it on when we weren't hooked up. Another wire continues on down this way, goes into the wall, and then comes out right there. So this is a reading light that I have. You can adjust it, different angles, and then it also goes to the USB charger, which is uh, for charging things at night, most likely your phone. Uh, and then I have the exact same thing over on the other side there. So the wires from that comes all the way around that part of the cove. Uh, right now I just have a regular vent, but I also added in an extra wire that goes up through the wall and is terminated up in the cove. So I can easily add another component sometime. I'm thinking about adding a, a fan vent at some point. So if you're inside the walls working on things, do yourself a favor and add another uh, circuit just in case you want to add something in the future. All right, so here I'm going to show you guys how to calculate the capacity of your trailer depending upon the size of battery that you get. So unfortunately, a lot of the deep cycle batteries you buy don't explicitly tell you exactly how many amp hours are on them, which is really what you need to figure that out. But uh, given the data that's on it, in the upper left-hand corner, you can see the sticker that I have on mine. It should have some of these numbers here. So an RC rating for 130 RC, uh, a lot of people will just divide that by 2 and assume that that's the amp hours, so that would be 65. But we also have 150 minutes at 23 amps. So from there we can figure out 150 minutes is 2.5 hours times 23 amps equals 57.5 amp hour battery. A uh, reminder up in the upper right I have the formulas to figure out how many amps something is based on the watts and the volts that you're applying to that. So the next thing to figure out is how many amps each of your components is going to draw. So I have the four components listed and the wattages which is usually what you can find uh, on the package but from there you use the equation in the upper right to get the amp draw. After that you need to estimate how many hours a day you're going to use those. So I just threw in a few estimates here. Uh, reading light, two hours. Charging phone, it'll be on all night or plugged in all night, but it doesn't really pull power all night. So I figured three hours. Uh, fan, five. And ceiling light, two hours. After that, you just multiply the amount of time they're on by the power draw. And you can get the amp hours uh, that you draw per day with each of your components. And then from there, you take the original number that we got for the amp hours of your battery, divide it by your power draw per day, and you get your amount of days that the battery will last. So there's a lot of factors involved here. Uh, you know, obviously your power consumption can go up and down each day, but this should give you a pretty good ballpark. If I was planning for a week-long trip, I'd be pretty sure that my battery is going to last long enough. Um, given a little bit of inefficiencies. So next up is the schematic. Um, I have here just a, a simple block di diagram schematic uh, starting on the battery. I have from there the master switch and then the that goes directly to the trailer frame to ground it. Uh, there's a lot of discussion on where to put a switch like this in a, in a, in a circuit like this, but I've uh, determined that the, the ground line uh, works for me and it uh, I had no problems with it so that's why I put that master switch on the positive side I have that 60 amp fuse that you saw inside the battery box and then from there the wire runs into the trailer and then there's the fuse block that was inside the plastic housing and then from there each four different circuits which was the the smaller 16 gauge stranded wire 
Each of those goes to the com component that is on that circuit, and then each of those components is grounded. So the overhead light is just screwed to the frame, which grounds it. USB panels have a separate wire going off the ground side, screwed into the trailer, and then same for the, the reading lights. Um, the power for the chargers by the bed goes to the USB charger, then to the reading light, and then that whole circuit is grounded, as well as the USB. So it's really not that complicated of a system when you look at it like this. It's just a matter of figuring out how you're going to route everything. So there you go.